my name is Yodit, and I, um, I started a company called Atomic Data Labs. This holistic architecture is when you don't know what you're doing. And when you don't know what you're doing is, is um, especially true for data-driven apps, because the way um, we get user stories and requirements and everything else for, from our clients, but there is no way for us to know what our applications are going to look like in six months' time. So we have to build infrastructure that is flexible and, and prepare to change, um, but also keep all our historical data. So we can't afford to pick and choose the, the schema as well as the, the types of data we keep. So we tend to, to use a, a layered approach. Um, so this is the processes that we um, follow. Um, we record everything. We keep all our data. So we keep machine data. Um, we run a whole bunch of servers. We analyze um, how our usage. We analyze the um, to keep our costs down. For example, we use AWS quite a lot. Um, we don't want to be running our servers when we don't need them. Um, and we also monitor spot instances. So we kind of we do this cycle pretty much constantly. Um, we for for web applications, you you monitor your user um, behavior and you try to you know record, measure, and build according to the feedback that you're getting. And while you're doing this, at the initial stages, it's very hard to plan for applications that are that are scalable that actually can can. Um, do this process. So most of the time, we're um, this is what we hack. We we have sensors. Um, we have um, software data and um, use a combination of data science. So the three-layered architecture is um, was proposed by somebody called Nathan Mars. Um, as you can see, your, your data is coming in um, in streams. So you've got real-time data, for example, from sensors um, coming in. To somebody, does anybody know how familiar are you with Storm and Hadoop and those kind of? Do you, do you want me to explain what they are? But, um, so Storm is a real-time, real-time um, data analytics tool. It's open sourced by Twitter, you know, maybe a year or two ago. And it can it's, it can scale to ridiculous amounts. We use it for um, for sensor monitoring. Um, other people use it on, on the Twitter API, so you can get you can process the streams of data. Um, Hadoop is the batch computational tool that everyone is using for for big data. But you you can also use um, something called Distro by Continuum IO. Um, there is, I think there's Spark or Shark for, for the Scala guys. Um, so this is, this architecture, whilst I'm kind of talking about Hadoop and Storm and, um, and stuff, it is actually, um, it is fairly agnostic. So you can use the, the batch distributed computational tool for, for batch, um, Storm, and I think there's S4 for real-time computing. and. Then, for the, the serving layer, um, what you do in Hadoop and MapReduce is you, you're basically counting. I mean, MapReduce is taking, counting whatever you want, whether it's words or, or anything else, and then you aggregate in the reducer or you do something else that's fairly basic, you know, like average or, or you know, you're not going to do, um, you're not going to do complex computation. Um, using MapReduce. You serve it to the serving layer, which could be a multitude of databases. Um, it could be NoSQL databases. Sometimes we use relational databases. Um, you know, it depends on your use case. You can use Cassandra, CouchDB, um, Redis, and so on. And this means that your architecture is pretty much really coupled. You can keep all your data in your batch, and you can come back and you can um, do some data mining if you want to find new insights. But your 
serving layer serves your applications. And if your applications change, that's the part that you change. Um, so, yep, with the batch layer, you record everything. Um, so the serving layer, these are examples of databases that you can use. Um, it depends on your use case. Um, we use quite a number of them. I mean, we use document databases for, for certain use cases. We use Redis quite a lot for uh, if, if, we want, um, if we want fast computation, especially on, on real-time data. Redis, quite, well, it works quite well. But um, Cassandra works as well for um, So the biggest thing that the serving, the advantage of having a serving layer is that we can experiment. We can, um, we can, we can produce kind of MVP type mock products and get it out there, get it out in the wild. And um, with the feedback that we get from it, we can improve it or we can can it because it actually hasn't cost us that much in development time. We still have our data and we'll go back and we'll We'll use the, the loop. Um, the real-time layer was um, previously complex. Storm abstracts away a lot of the complexity. I mean, it under the hood, it, it does quite a lot. It has a lot of dependencies like Zookeeper. It, it, I mean, you don't have to worry about what's going on to run it in parallel. All you're thinking about is, I got the data point, it's coming in, the streams of data is coming in, and filter it, aggregate it, and um, there is a, well, we, we actually do machine learning on the real-time data. We use, um, we use a library called Rabbit, and we, we can build models um, using our um, pre-learned um, pre-learned computations and and get feedback on our real-time data. Um, this is an example of a topology uh, for Trident. So this is a word count um, topology. As you can see, I mean, it's very simple. It's, it, before Trident, you used to have to write um, quite a lot of functions to, to be able to do this. So each line would have been a function before Trident. Now you've got, um, I don't know, less than 10 lines, and you can do word count in real time. This is, um, the word count will be coming in in endless streams. So after this, you can either write it to a database or you can throw it away. Um, so you can see the topology here. You can get a new field, which is the sentence. Um, you can group by a splitter and then group by a word and then do a count um, on the word. And this is pretty much like MapReduce, but in real time. Um, for, except MapReduce is, is batch, but it's the same principles. Um, I, does anybody use Hadoop um, in their day-to-day -day work? Do you use cascading? Um, cascading abstracts MapReduce as well. So instead of writing MapReduce, you can write cascading jobs, which will, under the hood, turn it into a MapReduce job and cascading is pretty much the same the same type of um, the same type of query so you can use group by um, you can use filter aggregate instead of thinking in terms of the math reduce um, logic which is possibly more verbose and you get into thinking about the math reduce rather than what you want to do with your data um, you can think in quite simple terms um, as a developer, anyway. So my formatting has gone kind of slightly strange. But um, <laughs> so yeah, we use Vopal Rabbit. We, we use um, what's known as an online learning algorithm, which is basically um, you have your, your training data, which is pre-labeled, but that's quite small considering the, the amounts of data that we get. Um, so we have a bit of a feedback loop where it labels um, and it predicts the output, but it also gets the feedback where it knows whether it's correct. So it gets better and better over time, and it's been very powerful. The accuracy rates that we've been getting have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, 
it uses feature hashing to or um, to, to to enable it to be fast. I mean, I won't go into what feature hashing is, but um, it's it, I recommend it anyway. It's um, in terms of we've we've tried Mahout and so, so on. I mean, Mahout you can't really use in in real time, but it's it's a lot faster even in parallel. And Vopal Rabbit has a Hadoop streaming um, feature, so you can use it in parallel with Hadoop. Um, that was quite short, but thank you.